Thank you for continuing to smash. Hey guys, it's Smashly. And if you're watching this, New World has launched. But you're probably wondering, how do I level fast? Don't worry, I got you. I took some time after the open beta to do some speed runs of level 1 to 18 on a build provided by the devs. This build is exactly the same as the open beta build. I'm going to run through a complete run to level 18 and end on obtaining the Azoth staff. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is after you create your character, if you want to skip the tutorial, you can actually just go up to the game menu and hit skip to new world. This will take you immediately to the new world and actually allow you to get into the queues faster than everybody else because they'll still be in the tutorial, which doesn't actually have a queue. There are a few downsides to this. Running the tutorial does give you a free shield, as well as give you a free mastery level on your sword, even if it locks you into the spin to win move. If you look in the upper right, you'll see I have a timer running. This is honestly to show you guys how the timer was actually working out for me as I leveled to 18 and got the Azoth staff, and also just to point out where we were doing really well on XP and so on and so forth. We're going to speed things up here, and we're going to run through the beginning quests. They're pretty straightforward, and we'll, I'll point out some of the different things I do to actually start speeding things up. You'll notice as I'm running through some of these starting quests that I actually start grabbing some flint and wood. I know that I'm going to need them for an upcoming quest to actually craft the skinning knife, and it's also really beneficial to go ahead and craft a logging axe as well as a mining pick to actually save you some time later. It's not a lot of time, but if you're looking for the fastest times, it does help. I actually make a mistake here and actually craft a harvesting sickle, and if you actually run the truffle quest that's between the starting area and the very first town you go to, you actually get a free harvesting sickle for just accepting the quest. Running the quest is actually a pretty good idea as well, because it does give about 250 experience, which is really good for early levels. You'll see here I actually start harvesting some of the boars here. That's because I know in the future, once we get into the town, we're actually going to need 16 raw hides to turn in for one of the quests. We want to make sure we get them now while we're already skinning boars for one of the quests that we're doing already. And really at this point, we're just running through some of the starting quests. You'll notice I don't loot a lot of the containers that are lying around. A lot of the early game loot isn't really worth it. The ones that you do really want to stop for are some of the larger chests because they do contain more loot, as well as any provisioning crates because food does become an issue if you're trying to speed run. Around this point, I'll actually stop and start grabbing any herbs or hemp that I see along the way. This is because I know it in the future, we're going to need 30 harvesting to actually get the river crest that we'll need for a much later quest as we're getting closer to 18. And if you notice, at this point, it's actually giving me pretty good XP. I think around this level, it actually gives me about a third of my bar towards level 6. On the way to town, I make sure I do have the 16 hides and 
I make sure I'm chopping down any trees or any boulders that I find until I have 40 wood, 40 stone, and 16 raw hides because that's the exact amount you'll need for a later quest and will save you a ton of time from having to run into town and out of town to collect those materials. Once we get to town, we spend a lot of time running back and forth, running a different quest, and we get a lot of experience here. It's also really good to take some of your materials and process them into the refined form so they take up less weight in your inventory or drop some off into your storage box. Along the way, make sure you're definitely tagging any of the lore notes that are lying around. Just interacting with these lore notes and quickly hitting escape will net you about 70 to 150 experience depending on what lore note it is. This can really, really start to add up in the long run and they're really, really fast. After we get out of town, we want to make sure we're still progressing our harvesting and making sure we're getting to 10 mining. Ultimately, for one of the later quests, that's what we'll need to complete it. Meanwhile, we'll make sure we pick up any side quests that we do see and just really hog the main story quest. If a side quest happens to line up with the main story quest, we'll do it. But for the most part, we really want to stay really true to the main story quest. One of the things you may notice that I'm doing in this video is doing a quick roll in the middle of all of my actions. If they don't actually change this in the in the final build, there is a quick thing that you can do while you're rolling and moving throughout the world that will actually really speed up your time or just get you around faster. And that is basically every time you roll, if you either weapon swap or sheath your weapon, it cancels the end of the rolling animation, which will actually help speed you up and doesn't slow you down at all.
one of the best things that happened during this run is I got a pretty good hatchet or pretty early on. Uh, the hatchet is a really great early leveling tool. Uh, you can get Berserk and then actually get the speed perk on Berserk as well as a healing that you can use to help sustain your battles as you go along. I started using this exclusively to try to level it and get to those perks as fast as possible. Once we progress the main story quest enough to actually get a faction, we end up joining the Syndicate because Syndicate for life! Go ahead and grab any missions that you can, and if you want a PvP flag up, it will improve your experience, and go ahead and grab those too. Being PvP flagged also grants you 10% extra experience on enemy kills. An important thing to note about the PvE missions though is if any mission that you pick up from your faction vendor that points you towards a particular animal to kill in a particular spot, I would avoid. There's a few of these like the dusty rams or sheeps that are especially bad. They'll point you towards go killing them in a specific area and there's really only about three or so that spawn and it ends up being a huge bottleneck for you because other players are also trying to do this. I go ahead and choose to run a few faction missions here, as well as run a few PvP faction missions here to get some faction rep up in preparation for actually after the level 18 grind, as well as to get some faction gear. The faction gear can be a really huge boon to your overall power in New World. Faction gear is usually pretty overtuned and has been for a while, and so hopefully you can actually just grab some faction gear real fast and get yourself powered up and be ready to actually PvP if you want to do that.
There's actually a moment here where I take a look at the faction gear, and I probably should have bought something, and I'm not even sure why I didn't. I think I was just too indecisive here and wanting to go fast. Once we reach level 11, there's a bunch of quests that actually open up in Windsward. One of those quests is by Domnall Cormac. He actually gives you a quest called No Competent Stew. And that quest actually leads ultimately to a really great quest for any tanks or anybody who's using a sword and board, as it comes with a 330 gear score sword with a carnelian gem in it. We don't actually end up completing that quest in this video, but I did want to point it out for anybody who does decide to tank. There's also some really great quest lines in Monarch's Bluffs as well as Everfall that do grant really great rewards as well. Definitely make sure you're picking up any of these side quests, especially because they can offer you really great rewards that can really help you gear up and get ready for Amrine Temple or any of your other expeditions as you go along the way. It's also at this point that I process all my materials and go ahead and get ready to craft myself some iron tools. I'm not able to craft all of them, but I make sure I craft myself a sickle and a skinning knife because those two will take me the longest and I'll be using them the most. One thing that I really could have done a lot better in this video and actually in my runs in general is go ahead and collect any water or honey that I find. Water and honey are really quick, easy foods that you can consume that don't provide an overall benefit to you, but do actually give you a really quick buff that will heal you for a very short amount of time that does get canceled on taking damage, but both of them will stack and allow you to heal and sustain in the fights longer. You may notice that my health gets pretty low in a few spots, and I even die in one spot. And if I would have had some honey or water or the combination of both, I probably wouldn't have as I'd been able to spam those and heal them. You can stack them in huge quantities and keep them in your hot bar and they don't take up any weight on your character. Again, we stick to the main story quest, and I do stop for a moment to actually try to complete a portion of the No Competent Stew by picking up the Briar Branches, but for the most part, we're sticking to the main story quest or doing any side quests that are really close by.
As we're running through the main story quest, there's two really important fast travel points that you want to make sure you grab. The very first one is the one between Monarch's Bluff and the Hermit himself. You'll see us grab that one here. You should also notice that we don't fight everything we see. Honestly, fighting most creatures doesn't really net you a lot of experience. It does give you some, and it does give you mastery experience for your weapons, but for the most part, most of your experience is going to come from turning in quests and doing the main story quest itself. One important thing to know is that once you start fast traveling a lot is to really lower your weight. Make sure you're salvaging your extra gear that you're picking up and making sure you're keeping your weight low so you keep your Azoth cost low. You notice I actually run into a problem where I don't have enough Azoth to travel because my weight is high. Quickly salvaging a bunch of gear allowed me to fast travel and continue the story quest. Also, don't be afraid to fast travel. If you see a point that's closer to your objective, fast travel to it. You're going to be getting a lot of Azoth from the main story quest. Most players actually cap out on Azoth. So fast travel as often as possible to speed up your times. The number one thing that will actually help you speed up your times on any of your starting runs is just to cut down travel times. Once the main story quest points you towards Arcturus, make sure you swing by Everfall, if you haven't done so already, and go ahead and pick up the quest there. There's a quest from the guy in the tavern that actually completely overlaps with the main story quest. Again, you'll notice that once we get into Arcturus, we have two quests here. We want to make sure that we kill the Reagent, as well as the Fallen Soul Warden at the top, and double up on our XP from completing two quests at the same time. I also end up dying here because again, I didn't have water or I didn't have honey to actually help me sustain in the middle of some of these battles. A lot of these will be a lot easier, especially if you're running with a group.
After this, again, we hug the main story quest and we head to the next objective, which is near Monarch's Bluff. I actually make another mistake here by fighting the Suffering Remnant. You don't actually have to fight him at all. All you have to do is walk up to the altar and just tag it and then get out of there. After we turn in the next part of the main story quest, our next major objective is to head down to First Light. It's actually really beneficial if you started in First Light because you'll actually get a fast travel point up to the Hermit that allows you to skip the trek entirely and allows you to fast travel down to the town down there. Because we didn't, we'll actually have to make the trek down there and it takes about 15 minutes in total for us to actually get down there, even with the rolling tricks and everything else that we're using to get down there faster. Along the way, we make sure we pick up any herbs or hemp that we see along the way to try to get our harvesting to 30. By the time we're almost down there, we almost have 30. We also are making sure that we're hitting any iron nodes that we see along the way as those give really good mining XP. We want to make sure we get to 10 mining so we can actually start mining silver as we'll need 5 silver bars to complete one of the quests. Once we make it to first light, we want to make sure we do at least swing by the town. Swinging by the town will allow us to process some of our materials to actually clear up some of our inventory space, as well as tagging the town allows us to fast travel there in, in the future. You can actually fast travel to any towns you haven't been to yet, so make sure you at least swing by any towns as you're passing them by. Once we get to the bridge, we actually encounter the worst part of my journey here. I actually really struggled at this point and was struggling to kill some of the enemies. I'm really thankful that I had the foresight to set up a camp nearby and was able to respawn quickly to get back into the fight.
You also notice that if you have 30 harvesting by this point, I do go under the bridge to grab a river quest stem that we'll need later. We'll still need one more, but we at least get two here. Eventually we complete the bridge, but not without a lot of wasted time. It could have been a lot better run, but we at least completed it. And as long as we're there at the quest, it's usually not a lot of wasted time. Once we're done with the quest, you'll actually notice that I actually sit here in the water and drown myself to actually kill myself so I can get back to town quicker. You can use this trick anywhere where you're not PVP flagged with PVP missions, as those will fail, to get back to town quicker if the trek is going to take that long. In this case, it did. And so we got back to town and then fast traveled back to the hermit. the next part, I noticed that there's actually two quests over in Monarch's Bluff that are right near the main story quest. I decided to go ahead and do these for a little bit of extra XP because they're along the way for the most part. Like many of the main story quests, you don't actually have to kill any of these enemies. All you have to do is grab the haft at the top of these rocks here and then get out. Here I use another death trick to teleport back to town. And at this point, I decide to actually go ahead and use some of those faction tokens I got earlier and go ahead and get some faction armor.
At this point I'm feeling pretty good about our levels, but not so much about our gear, so I decided to go ahead and run a few more PvP missions to get a few more faction points and get a few more pieces of armor. Also, while I'm in Windsward, I want to make sure I grab some puddle caps. They're little green plants that you can probably see from a distance. There's some right outside of town and they're all over the place. Make sure you at least have three of these. Now we head up to the Druid at the very top of Everfall. Make sure you grab the fast travel point up here as this is the second most important fast travel point in the main story quest near the beginning. Once you get up here, make sure you place a camp near the Druid. Also, big dummy me forgot to grab some water, so I run over here to grab some water. I 
have a really hard time with some of the tendrils over here. Usually there's a lot of players once the game is live, and you should have no problems dealing with them, either by yourself or with a group. But by myself here with no one else around, it did pose a serious problem with all the extra enemies around. Took my time and finally got them down, and we're off to the races. Once we have all the tendrils down, we go back and talk to the druid lady, and she actually instructs us to go ahead and craft the corruption tinctures. If you didn't have all the ingredients by this point, which is three river crest stems, three petal caps, and some water, then she'll actually instruct you to go ahead and gather what you're missing. But we already have everything by this point, which is then when we head to the camp that we constructed earlier, and go ahead and craft them there. The instructions actually tell you to go back town, but you don't have to do that. You can just craft them right at your camp. For the next part of the quest, after you kill the five corrupted, to discover what the corrupted are planning, there's a note inside the cave that you have to tag. You don't actually have to kill the boss inside. Now we head back to the Hermit, turn on our quest, and here's where he asks for the, the five silver ingots. If you already have 10 mining, silver ingots should be pretty easy to find if you haven't found it already. Any wolf cave will have silver ore to gather. We already have the ore we need, we just need to smelt it in ingots, so we head down to Windsward because that's the closest point to where we need to get.
We go kill Ezra the Forge Master, which is a pushover. Then we go talk to the Hermit real fast and then head up to Everfall for the last part of our journey.
For this last part of the quest, you can just run by almost every single enemy that you see. When you get to the final area, all you have to do is jump up onto the altar there, and the enemies will start retreating back. Once the enemies have retreated back, craft your Azoth staff and hit level 18. <laughs> all in all, it was a decent run. Three and a half hours for level 18 is still really fast, and I really enjoyed the run and actually prepping for these. I hope some of the tips and tricks that you guys found in this video are helpful, and I hope it helps your way through a turnum. Also, if you guys could like, comment, subscribe, I mean, I guess that's really great. I don't know. Do the things. Good luck out there, and I'll see you on the beach. Thank you for continuing to smash.